morning everybody. Um, so today I'm going to talk about this uh, game intelligence and informatics, which we are kind of pioneering as part of Games 24-7, right? Um, so um, what is, so the takeout from this talk would be what is game intelligence and game informatics, right? And why do we need it? So much of it is stemming from the fact that we work in real money gaming, right? And uh, some of our products are into real money gaming space, right? Circle, which is into fantasy uh, sports, uh, but we also have right freemium games, casual gaming, right, um, and and uh, much of the requirement of game intelligence, right, comes from the intersection of artificial intelligence and real money gaming, right, and that's the uh, course of this talk that's going to be there. So, so who we are, right? So we we are kind of a very high level. Uh, uh, gaming company, the largest in terms of revenue in India, and uh, you know we have been growing exponentially. These numbers show up to 2018, but even from then on, we have grown exponentially. Even the rate has been higher from then till now, right? Um, and um, we we have like across our uh, various different uh, products, we have uh, more than uh, uh, you know two lakh users, right, per day, and. Uh, you know, close to 3 lakh users per day if I combine multiple products together. Um, interestingly, all these users are generating huge amount of data, right? Data in the range of, you know, around close to 3 terabytes per day. Um, only in our Rami Circle product, there is around uh, 2,500 games that happen every minute, right? So, so the amount of data that gets generated needs to be looked into, right? And how can we look into it in an effective manner to make sure that we can provide the most uh, best experience, gameplay experience to our to our players, you know, right? And these actions are, you know, either inside the game that they are playing the game, they are making moves as part of the game, as well as outside of the game, right? Which means that they are probably depositing money, they are making some transactions, right? Or they are maybe even withdrawing money and stuff like that, right? Uh, win losses, all sorts of information is generated, right? And um, all this data gets again tracked through our business intelligence as well as our technology teams who does everything uh, to make sure that this huge amount of data, which in modern days we call it as big data, but it's 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 it's, uh, it's a volume and velocity is is enormous in, in in these kind of systems. And then we come in and we kind of make sense of this data. Sometimes it starts with uh, descriptive analytics, which means that we just look at the data to figure out what is going on. Uh, more sophistications in the intelligence, right? And these sophistications can get into predictions, can get into recommendations, and uh, a bunch of other things that I'm going to briefly touch upon, right, in the time. So before that, who am I and where am I coming from, right? So I, I come from a research background, essentially, right? And uh, with, with a uh, long experience and industry research, um, uh, and, and we are trying to bring in this research mindset into gaming, right? Uh, and, and making sure okay, what kind of AI innovations can uh, transform the gaming world. Especially, you know, starting from our real money gaming, but in general, you know, across different kinds of gaming sectors. And that's the whole objective that we are building towards within, within Games 24-7. So, so what is AI in gaming, right? We, we basically uh, speak about AI these days quite a bit and what is the intersection of AI and gaming, right? And typically when we talk about AI and gaming, we talk about automated agents, right? You know, we have like, you know, it, 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 you know today we can create automated agents, graphical agents and all of that, right? I'm not going to talk about automated agents at all, right? Because we are talking about real money, we cannot have automated agents. I mean, and I want to be very clear about that, right? So what does it then uh, uh, involve, right? It involves, you know, we want to understand our players, right? So these are, um, uh, you know, gaming platforms where uh, players like you and me are playing with each other, you know? It's just that it's being done in a digital platform, right? What kind of data, what kind of information we are generating through our gameplay, through the clicks, is something that is very important and we want to understand that, um, why somebody is making certain action, taking certain action as part of the platform uh, compared to the others, right? What would be the root cause, right? And if we understand all of that, we can enable very personalized player experience, right? Both in terms of 
journey inside the gate area systems as uh, 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 as we will see in the later part of the talk, right? So, uh, uh, what does it involve? Like, yes, of course, we want to learn the game state, right? Why somebody is taking certain action at a given game state? Uh, is that the correct action or not? We want to monitor and, and try to understand uh, and profile the player behavior. And based on that, um, we can provide the personalized experience that we want to uh, go after, right? Um, how do we do that? You know, I uh, briefly spoke about the enormous amount of data that we need to handle. Um, in an automated manner and also, you know, bring in all the smarts through machine learning, deep learning, reinforcement learning, name it, right, uh, all, the, all the modern AI solutions that is. And of course, uh, you know, since we are talking about AI in gaming, right, we cannot leave out all the other aspects, right, that um, uh, comes from the niche uh, problems like, um, you know, AR, VR, you know, esports and, and stuff like that. Um, you know, even automated agents come under under that. But um, one important thing is, uh, you know, there are certain games where um, it, it plays in the intersection of skill as well as certain uh, hidden elements, right? So there is a whole new uh, genre of gaming which is called partially observable stochastic games, right? What it means that, you know, when I'm playing the game, I don't know the, uh, the opponents are seeing as part of the game as well as there are certain hidden elements in the game that will unfold during the course of the game as, as the game evolves, right? And under that, how can we make sure that whatever action a player is taking is the correct action or not, right? And that's the whole, whole challenge that we, we want to run after. So again, you know, continuing on the scope of AI in gaming, right? So we, we consider there are, you know, three verticals over here. Um, they are not necessarily exclusive, but they do interplay, but there are, you know, uh, certain objectives that these verticals bring in, right? First is game AI, right? Which is kind of obvious to everybody, right? It's like inside the game, right? Game dynamics, understanding the game dynamics, how it is evolving. Um, you know, game state prediction, action predictions, uh, stuff like that. Um, then there is content AI, which is coming from the, you know, gaming platform point of view, right? So this content AI would involve like, uh, you know, what kind of deposit times to be shown to the user for them to deposit as part of the platform. This, we are talking about real money gaming, right? So where, where, where uh, players need to first deposit money as part of their account and then use that account uh, balance to play games, right? So uh, you, you show tiles. It's like any e-com website. You will have you know, like tile amounts, right, to, 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 to certain recommendation and do certain recommendations and all. So those kind of things come in when we are talking about, you know, digital, online, real money gaming platforms, right? And then there is a uh, process AI, which kind of connects everything together, right? Which, uh, like how you, uh, uh, how can you uh, target your uh, players better, right? How can you, um, you know, uh, automate some of the services that you want to uh, give to them, right? And stuff like that. And there are a bunch of other uh, aspects which come in as well, which kind of cuts across all of these, uh, uh, you know, different verticals. One important thing being skill based matching, right? You know, we, we can understand from their gameplay, right? What kind of strategy, skill somebody is, is, is uh, coming in. How do you match them together, right? Today, you know, we, as I said, right, we are providing platform where players like you and me are playing, right? Who plays with whom? is something that is very important, right? And that can be based on their skill, based on how they play the game and stuff like that. Um, there is also, you know, procedural content generation is the new age, right? For any game development kind of thing, but not necessarily as part of real money gaming, uh, but for casual games. Um, okay, again, just to build the story a little bit better. So then what is game intelligence and informatics, right? Um, uh, so, game intelligence and informatics is essentially an end-to-end -end analytics of the players, right? Uh, that cuts across three dimensions, right? The game dynamics, which is inside the game, right? Uh, what action somebody is taking, why they are taking, and stuff like that. And then the game platform, I briefly touched about, uh, uh, about that, right? In real money gaming, uh, outside of the game, there are certain things people can do. Or the click stream that happens, right? Um, you know, somebody deposits amount, right? Withdraws amount and uh, all, all the other related stuff. And then, of course, the user. Everything is connected to the user. We are talking about players uh, very heavily over here. We are not creating automated agents. We are creating, you know, analysis of our players by understanding how they are uh, 
are behaving in the game dynamics as well as in the game platform. And that is that that end-to-end -end analytics, that end-to-end -end informatics is what we are calling as gaming intelligence and informatics, right? To understand our players. So that we can then provide the personalized and wholesome gameplay experience that is very important for uh, you know our, our users. So again, we, we touch upon various different um, uh, research areas. I, I briefly mentioned that, but I again going to repeat that we mostly work on into this partially observable stochastic games uh, domain, which kind of needs research in all the different aspects that is listed over here. Um, okay, so how do we do that, right? And I'm, I'm going to not get too much into the details given the time, right? But essentially what you can see is that there is uh, a set of raw data that gets generated, right? As I said, right, 2.5 terabytes of data gets generated on a daily basis, right? And, and this data comes from transaction, from uh, clickstream, right, as part of our platform, from the game action, and uh, you know many uh, various other kinds of data like audit logs and stuff like that. Now, from this, you know, of course, we can we can create intelligence, business intelligence on top of this, right? We can provide anomaly detection, anomalous behavior, gameplay behavior. We can uh, do uh, you know other kind of behavior prediction, whether somebody is going to churn our system or not, right? Whether somebody is bored or or, or um, disengaged or not, right? Or we can have other kind of uh, uh, personalized recommendation. The key thing that we are bringing in in the middle is the middle layer, which we are calling as game action information mining, right? Which kind of feeds into all of these uh, recommendations, and that's very important. This uh, game action information mining framework is actually looking into how the players are playing the game, right? And understand, right? What is the uh, key reason that somebody is making one particular move over the other? And we can even benchmark players, right? Compare players, right? At a cohort level, at a at a segment level, right? At a user level, um, and, and bunch of stuff that we can do. And that's the purpose of uh, this game action information mining. So to enable GII, which is game intelligence and informatics, this uh, game framework is extremely extremely important. Without that, it's probably not possible. Um, so, you know, just I will go a little bit deeper in some of these topics, right? So, uh, so in the rest of the talk, what I'm going to uh, take you through probably a little bit about game action analysis in the partially observable stochastic game domain, right? And how we'll, uh, we are using deep learning there. We are going to briefly touch upon responsible and ethical games uh, in uh, real money gaming. And of course, uh, you know, other kind of real time. Um, uh, recommendations and experimentations beyond, you know, of course, in, in casual gaming, these kind of things uh, uh, does exist, right, in terms of, uh, you, you know, real-time experimentation of your agents and all of that, but we are not talking about agents over here, but still there is a lot of real-time experimentation that exists, right, in, in real gaming. All right, so, um, Briefly into um, uh, fine grain gameplay analytics, uh, we'll, we'll take a game of uh, Rami, which is uh, as, a, as an example, right, which is again uh, comes within the partially observable stochastic gameplay uh, domain. So one of the very important decisions there, right, as a player is whether to play a game or not, right. So it's a card game, so you are basically dealt with a set of cards, right, and by looking at the card, first decision that you take whether you should continue playing with this set of card or not, right? And that's a very, very key decision and that tells us a quite a bit of thing about the player, right? Whether somebody is actually playing for entertainment, somebody knows the game or somebody is actually being aggressive, you know, uh, uh, and, and stuff like that, right? So, um, uh, and, and they, you know, understanding that information is, is, is just one bit of it. And of course, in the game, there are multiple other actions that happen. We are not going to get too much into that details, but we are going to see that, okay, if somebody knows when to, uh, you know, back out and say that, okay, I'm not going to play the game, right? How that makes a key difference in uh, understanding the player, right? Now, this uh, is not a very straightforward uh, 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 thing to understand, right? Because the game can have you know, uh, in, uh, humongous amount of game state, right? You know, there are possibilities, you know, which goes up to close to 100 trillion, right? 
Um, and and then of course, as I said, there are uh, you, you know around two and half thousand deals that happen per minute, and we have to do it right on a online uh, base uh, on a on a real time basis, right? And also, right, we want to learn in a in a in a supervised manner. By supervised, I essentially mean is that we want to see you know certain set of players how they are behaving, and we want to learn that, and and we want to create a machine model, right, which can mimic that uh, understanding and then compare that with other set of Players, right um, and and then uh, so so it's definitely not a very straightforward problem to address so we look into uh, deep learning so what we do we we represent the game state or at a particular uh, 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 state of the game as an image right as an image and then we apply deep learning to do an image classification to see that whether you know this is a state where a user should at least uh, actually drop out or should continue playing, right? As simple as that, right? So, um, uh, so again, I'm not going to get too much into details. This is not the image that we we learn from, by the way. So we just convert that image into something like a, a, a more representative of a card game, right? So any card game will have you know four suits, and each suit will have thirteen cards, right? So and and there is certain representation which says that okay. And, and we have multiple layers in this image, right? So first layer would be like whether this card is present in that particular set of hand that, uh, that is uh, at the beginning or, or not, right? And then there are multiple other layers which takes into account multiple other information about the about about the about the game state, and then we apply a very very customized um, you know image classification model, and then based on that we say that okay you know this is uh, a, a game state where it's a good game state you should continue playing. Or it's a game state which is not so good a game state, and you should drop out or back out, right? And that's the uh, that's the crux of all of this. And and if a player actually knows and is skillful, right, how to play the game, he will uh, uh, drop out. Or, uh, and so so that's a representation of the player's skill also. And we'll see how that actually makes a difference. Um, so what you see over here is again. I mean, let's not get into the clutter of this, but you know, just to take you through. You know, so there is, you know, the, the, these two are two representative uh, plots over here, right? So what this says is, um, so, uh, um, uh, so, so the green and the magenta means that the player is playing the game. X-axis is different games and Y-axis is the uh, game state uh, quantified, right? So if it is high, this means it's not a good state. If it is low, it's a good state, right? So, and these are for representative players, right? So, if you see over here, this player is actually uh, playing most of the games. If you see, it's, it's cluttered with green and magenta, right? So, which means he's always playing. He's an aggressive player, right? Irrespective, and he's playing irrespective of whether the goodness of the, uh, you know, game state or not. Versus this player who is probably not playing at all, right? Who is uh, backing out most of the times. He's he's definitely a conservative player. Uh, doesn't mean that he knows the game better because he's not playing at all. He's being uh, extremely safe in, in, in from that perspective, right? But he's a conservative player. Just to give you an uh, 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 you know uh, 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 idea that how we can understand more fine-grained information about the player beyond just whether he has won or lost the game, right? Um, so based on this, all of this information, we have seen, you know, uh, various different impact on the um, on, on the platform level business metrics, right? So for example, players who know how to get uh, how to drop out, right? They show, you know, uh, reasonably high first deposit. So the green line is the first deposit of the players, right? In in a way, who who knows how to drop the game, right? Um, so so they, they 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 know to play the game and they play the game accordingly, right? They, they convert faster. So conversion means a player is actually starting to play with real money, right? So so they, they, they know how to play the game, they convert and they start playing the game. So all this information is very important for us to understand and characterize uh, the play behavior as well as the player, right? And then to target them accordingly, right? Um, and we can then again cluster and I'm going to get to get into the details into the intent of the player, right? Why, you know, a player is getting bored, whether he is, uh, you know, probably um, a little bit um, uh, disappointed because of the losses. And uh, that's that's also some of the things that we can uh, figure out from, from all of this information. 
right? And we can then, you know, customize our player journey depending on we can have targeted recommendation, we can um, have accurate behavior prediction. We have actually seen that, you know, you know, we have a prediction model to say that whether a player is going to churn or not, right? And with this information, right, about uh, with, with game action information mining in the middle, right, we have seen that the prediction accuracies have increased quite a bit, right, for the players, especially for the players who are started to play the game, right, whether he will continue or not, right, that prediction accuracy increases um, uh, uh, significantly. It can, we can also incul inculcate responsibility in playing the game. We can say that, you know, this is a game probably a player should not have played, but he played, right? And we can then provide the feedback and, and then do certain things towards responsible gaming in, in general, right? So, again, talking about responsible and ethical gaming, we consider this very seriously in our company, right? So, we, 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 cons uh, we want the games to be played as a safe entertainment and not uh, uh, for anything else, right? And we, through machine learning again, through AI, try to identify players who are going the wrong path and then, uh, you know, uh, we, we take them to a journey where, you know, we even uh, don't let them continue playing the game, right? So that's what we, we do, even if it takes a hit into our um, revenues, right? But so that's why it's very important to identify the correct players, right, and take them to a different journey. So uh, they are again, we, we look into various different dimensions, right, from based on the time they are spending within the game, the money uh, aspect, the losses that they are uh, inculcating, and their desperation, you know, and that drop behavior is one aspect of the desperation, which says that, okay, uh, you know, somebody is playing the game when they should not have played the game, right? And all these different dimensions we look at uh, to then say that, okay, um, uh, you know, the, we, we try to see that whether the, they are showing anomalous behavior, they are going in a path which is not normal, right? And that's when we, we flag the players and they are taken to a completely different journey. Along these lines, another thing we also uh, take into look into is, is, is fraud that might happen, right? We have actually built a system where uh, in real time per game, we are looking at their gameplay, right? And seeing that whether they are uh, playing the game correctly and not doing any, any fraudulent behavior, right? Maybe, so what you are seeing over here, this particular diagram is like uh, the um, win, loss, and switch behavior, right? So what this means is that the player is switching initially. Switching means they're trying to find the other uh, partner, right, to play with, right? And they're switching heavily to find that partner and then, you know, getting into more of a fraudulent behavior where they are losing games where they shouldn't have lost the games, right? So, and stuff like that, right? And uh, so, so, so these are some of the things that we look into to, again, then detect whether, whether there are fraudulent activities going on in the system or not. Um, Again, I mean, apart from this, there is, uh, of course, I, I, I mentioned about real-time uh, testing experimentation need for, even for real money gaming, right? It's, it's very important, and one of the things is, like, we look into contextual bandit, multi arm bandit for testing, and one of the applications of that, as I briefly touched upon initially, is to show the correct tile amounts to our users, right? And then that uh, actually depends on the user, right? Whether the user in, is in a winning streak, losing streak, uh, it's a festive season, not a festive season. And depending on that, we, we want to show the tile amounts to the users, which are personalized for that user. And this, this can change in, in real time um, or in semi-real time, right? So, uh, so these are the entire gamut of things, essentially, that we are looking at. Um, through this game in, in intelligence and informatics. So to conclude, right, we are kind of pioneering this, this uh, effort towards uh, GII um, within Games 24-7, uh, um, and that helps us advance closure to, you know, very wholesome personalization, uh, both from game uh, offering as well as from the game and again, right, um, uh, so, so the key, uh, uh, from the AI team's point of view, one of the key uh, quest is to consolidate the research directions of game AI, game data science, because we are in the online platform, um, and the game user research. So that kind of concludes my talk. I'm happy to take any question. We are always hiring, right, as you see, because we are always growing. And... Uh, um, 
Uh, another thing is that we are organizing a workshop uh, around GII in, in PAKTT, which is one of the top AI translates in Singapore uh, next year. Um, you know, uh, you'll, you'll hear more about that given 